part of the charm of these early Hammer films is the fact that they were not made in conventional studios. Even when they'd busied themselves putting up large stages, you can still get very much the impression of the fact that they're working in a real place, a real house. For example, in Dracula, when Christopher Lee brings John Van Eysen into his bedroom, that scene is distinguished, if you look closely, by the fact that you can see the actor's breaths. It was shot in November, December. It was very cold. And uh, this kind of thing, being literally being able to see the breath pluming out of their mouths as they speak, uh, lends a, a really interesting immediacy to the films and also in the most basic way it gives the films a rather chilling effect because it clearly was chilly while they were making them. The little girl I remember, Jeannie Nefay, because she was such a baby, baby doll, and I remember we formed quite a, quite a little bond between us because I was meant, I think, to chase this little girl through the woods and it was such a, she was such a sweet little thing. I heard you call me Aunt Lucy. Yes, dear. They were clever to cast such a young girl because that must have meant that there was huge sympathy. So that would have been a good contrast to all the horror and everything. I made three films for Hammer. I made Dracula, Two Faces of Dr. Jekyll, I Never Take Sweets from a Stranger. And they were all done at Bray Studios. I loved working there. It was like going home. Other studios, other film studios that I worked with after that, they were always the bigger studios. But going back to Bray was like going home. And I think it was because everybody there was, it was like a family unit. They were always the same people there. When Hammer took formal charge of Down Place, uh, one of the first things they did, and this was in 1953, was to convert the ballroom of Down Place into a special Stage. They called it initially Stage BCD, but later in the 50s it was rechristened Stage 3, and it makes a particularly impressive appearance in their version of The Mummy, which they made in February, March 1959. John Banning, played by Peter Cushing, his, his drawing room is basically the ballroom at Down Place, where you've got very, very familiar semicircular French windows at the end. Now anyone who's been to Bray Studios will know that those semicircular French windows back directly onto a lawn which slopes very rapidly down to the banks of the River Thames. And it is those very ballroom windows that Caris the mummy in the person of Christopher Lee smashes through in very, very exciting style. almost on a cycle basis, say five or six weeks shooting per film, five days a week, two to three weeks break in between them, that and the next film. So the revamping of the sets was very key to Bernard's planning and because this was also accomplished by having a very able art director in the name of Don Minge. And Don was able to transpose onto the shooting set, Bernard's drawings and Bernard's ideas and Bernard's colours. It was one big favourite memory, really. When we were busy, it was not like going to work for me and a lot of other people. We arrived very often from Hammersmith Broadway where people would get on a bus and driven out through Windsor. To Bray. A brilliant idea was formed and this old rattling blue single-decker retired bus was bought by the company. I used to catch the staff bus which always left Williams Street Hammersmith at 7.30 sharp to be at the studio at 20 past 8 so that we had to be on the set for 8.30. We stopped, I think it was on the A four at a big workman's cafe for breakfast and we really looked forward to this breakfast and feasted ourselves and I think the company paid for the breakfast then we got back on the bus and we would go down the various stops Hounslow, 
picking up different members of the crew, going through Windsor, Slough, Windsor, to pick up the last few members, and then we would arrive at the studio. I can't remember when the bus went to, out to grass, but I feel very sentimental about that bus. There seemed to be a shortage of script supervisors, or continuity girls as they were then called, with cars that could drive out to Bray Studios, which was out of London. So they thought they should train someone who lived local, and I lived really near the studio. So they, it was Tony Hines that just asked me if I would be interested in training and learning how to do that particular job. And so I trained under Tilly Day on two films, and then suddenly um, Tony Hines comes to me on the set while I'm sitting beside Tilly. He said, Pauline, I need, to, need to, can you come into the office? So I went into his office. He said, we have a dilemma in Ireland. He said, you know, we are filming their Sword of Sherwood Forest. He said, Richard Green has refused to work until we replace the script supervisor, the continuity girl, because she wasn't very good. He said, so we'd like to put you on the plane tonight to Ireland. And the problem was, as I was told, was that she never knew how many arrows he should have in his quiver. So they just said, Pauline, as long as you watch those arrows in his quiver and don't make him look silly when he should have arrows or shouldn't have. So I just concentrated on his arrows. But anyway, somehow I did survive and there were three more weeks to go. And we did tell Richard Green on the last day that I was quite new to the job. But I obviously, I, I did. I coped all right. Everyone was watching out for me. And then I came back and I started doing continuity for real, for myself. Dracula had been made in late 1957, and of course in the summer of 58 it was another massive worldwide smash hit. The external castle set, that area of the back lot, remained in place in 1959, and it was converted for use in a kind of historical horror called The Stranglers of Bombay. Then it was entirely struck and Bernard Robinson erected a generic village square set, which at the beginning of 1960 was pressed into service for the Brides of Dracula. So this highly impressive village square set, which given that it was used in the Brides of Dracula is presumably meant to be a village square in Transylvania or thereabouts, uh, is used a couple of months later in a film called The Terror of the Tongs. Somehow in this film, owing to Bernard Robinson's genius, this Transylvanian village square becomes a Hong Kong waterfront set. And in the summer of 1960, they're proposing to make a film called, at various times, The Rape of Sabina, or, or I think the final title that they were going to go with was The Inquisitor. They were all set to make this movie, which was about the Spanish Inquisition, when Colombia refused point blank to distribute any such film. But in the meantime, Bernard Robinson had converted that village square stroke Hong Kong dockside set into a specifically Spanish village square. Very impressive it is too, with tolling bells and everything looking distinctively Hispanic. What can we do with this set? We're no longer making a film about the Spanish Inquisition. Oh, that werewolf movie we were thinking of doing, uh, which became The Curse of the Werewolf. It's based on a book, quite a famous book by Guy Endor called The Werewolf of Paris. Well, Hammer's wonderful expedient solution was to forget about the Paris bit and relocate The Curse of the Werewolf to Spain. Shortly after completion of The Curse of the Werewolf, in January 1961, there was a rather major fire in the main house at Down Place, which wiped out the ballroom stage, stage three, as it was called. But undaunted, uh, at the end of that year, Hammer actually expanded the village square set into a kind of two-part village square, which was first used in Captain Clegg. The year after that, they put up something called the Gothic Structure, which made its first appearance in The Kiss of the Vampire. It was used as a kind of frontage to these two village squares, and subsequently it turned up very effectively in 1963 as the front of Chateau Frankenstein in The Evil of Frankenstein, and a very effective Castle Borsky in The Gorgon, 